1,500 votes is a derisory total. And we, and we have shown tonight that the referendum party is dead in the water. Reports of my political demise were not in fact exaggerated. I believe that this is, has been a unique occasion and it will certainly not be repeated under the same condition. This is a very sad, very worrying evening. A truly uh, terrible night for the Conservatives. Democracy in action is awesome. Being the returning officer for the Putney constituency, I hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows. Beige Lenny, Happiness Stands Freedom to Party Party, 101. <laughs> Coleman Tony, Labour Party, 20,084. Goldsmith James Referendum Party, 1,518. <laughs> Jemison William, UK Independence Party, 233. Mella David, Conservative Party, 17,108. Seeker, Independent Beautiful Party, 49. Pine, Russell, Liberal Democrat, 4,739. Small, John, Natural Law Party, 66. Van Braam, Dorian, Renaissance Democrat, 7. Yardley, Michael, Sportsman's Alliance, anything but Mella, 90. And that, and that Tony Coleman has been duly selected, elected to serve as member for the Putney constituency. This is a great victory for Putney and a great victory for New Labour. A new beginning for Putney and for the United Kingdom. A new age of achievement. I will always keep faith with the Putney constituents and I pay tribute to David Mellor in the work that he's done as a constituency MP. And I will continue and improve upon that service to the people of Putney. But there is so much to do with 18 wasted years, 18 wasted years. I pay tribute to Tony Blair, to his brilliant reforming zeal, to his magnificent campaign and his enthusiasm for a better future. For a Britain under Labour speaks for the many and not the few. Can I go on to thank the returning officer, the presiding officers of each of the polling stations and the polling clerks and the counting clerks the police and the Territorial Army, who have been sure that this is an incident-free election. I'd like to thank my wife, Juliet, who's hiding in the back, and my family, and thank my agent, Dennis Meehan, my chair, my chair, Chris Locke, and all the many members of Putney Labour Party. But most of all, I thank all the people of Putney, Roehampton and Southfields, for voting for putting their trust in New Labour, and invite them and all of you to join Labour to build for a better Britain. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to begin by, of course, thanking uh, the staff of Wandsworth Town Hall for, as usual, an extremely fast uh, count. Having stood here on four separate occasions, having won, 
I cannot complain that the wheel of fortune has now turned against me. I would like to say uh, to Tony Coleman my warmest congratulations. Uh, Tony Coleman has had a highly successful career in business and in local government, and I wish him well uh, as Member of Parliament for Putney. I would also like to say uh, to the Liberal Democrat, Russell Pine, it was a privilege to stand in an election with him. As for some of the rest of uh, the candidates assembled here, uh, what can I say, even uh, as a fellow of the Zoological Society, did not prepare me for, uh, for this. I would, um, I would say that, um, and I think the, um, and I think that, I, th I think it should be, it should be noted, it should be noted, it should be noted that the noise that's being made in this hall has nothing to do with the serious candidates in this election. It has to do with members of the referendum party and, and, and the supporters of the gun lobby who got 99 votes in this election. And I would just like to say this. What has happened in this country tonight is a tidal wave that has uh, moved uh, uh, the Labour Party into office. What has happened is that we had 18 successful years, but this is not a one-party state, and it is inevitable, therefore, that at some point we should leave office, and that's what's happening tonight. I would like to make clear, though, that the Labour Party has won tonight, not on a socialist platform. The Labour Party has won tonight on a platform of moderation and a platform that is in many respects indistinguishable from that of the Conservative Party. And I think the Labour Party would sell this country short if that were then to be changed. And I'd only like just to say this to Sir James, to Sir James Goldsmith, who's got nothing to be smug about. And I would like to say, I would like to say that 1,500 votes is a derisory total. And we, and we have shown tonight that the referendum party is dead in the water. And Sir James, you can get off back to Mexico knowing your attempt to buy the British political system has failed. Thank you very much. I, Keith Yates, as the returning officer of the Stirling constituency, hereby give notice that the total number of votes polled for each candidate in this election was as follows. Ewan Gordon Dow, Scottish National Party, 5,752. <laughs> Michael Bruce Forsyth, Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party, 13,971. Anne McGuire, the Scottish Labour Party, 20,000. <laughs> 20, 20,382. William McMurdo, UK Independence Party, 154. <laughs> Elaine Liv MacDonald Olson, Value Party candidate, 24. <laughs> Alistair Tuch, Scottish Liberal Democrat, 2,675. and that Anne Maguire has been duly elected to serve <laughs> in, <clears throat> to, to serve in Parliament as member for this constituency.
I would like to record my thanks and those of the candidates to you, Mr. Yates, and your staff for the excellent way in which you conducted this count. And I'm sure I would have said that even if I hadn't won tonight. I would also like to thank the police and all the other staff who have, uh, like the party workers in this constituency, not only enjoyed the sun today, but also did uh, the duty that was expected of them. I would also like to record my thanks to the other candidates. This has been a long, gruelling campaign in this constituency, and I think that we have conducted it um, sometimes with heat, but certainly with civility and courtesy, and I certainly would like to comment on that. And finally, in terms of thanks, I would like to thank those party workers and supporters who over the last 20 months or so have sustained me and our campaign team through all of this election. Um, some of them are here represented tonight and I can say publicly that I have never worked with a better team of party members and supporters in all my years in the party. So thank you very much to you. Can I say just uh, by way of comment that in this constituency the Labour Party campaigned on the future and we campaigned on a range of issues which reflected the aims and aspirations of the people of this constituency. We dealt with the big issues and I am pleased to know that within a few weeks we will be back on the campaign trail making sure that there is a double yes vote for a Scottish Parliament. <laughs> And the people in this constituency demanded leadership on Europe and the Labour Party will give them leadership on Europe. And that cuts across all of those who have been badly disaffected over the last wee while with the lack of leadership shown by the government. But finally, I went into this election with a series of pledges and core to those pledges was the fact that as a Member of Parliament for Stirling constituency, I will represent all communities in this constituency and I look forward to the next five years doing that, working with local communities, working with local people. It will be a great privilege to be the first Labour Member of Parliament in this area for 13 years. Thank you very much. Mr. Returning Officer, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, perhaps I should begin by acknowledging that uh, reports of my political demise were not in fact exaggerated. <laughs> I, uh, it's uh, a good night uh, for the Labour Party, there's no doubt about that. Uh, the only uh, kind of silver lining I've been able to discover was that there were one or two members of the Scottish media who put bets on me winning, so I can take some consolation from that. Uh, it has uh, uh, been a great uh, privilege uh, for me to serve as the Member of Parliament uh, for Stirling since 1983 and I would like to thank uh, the electors of Stirling for having given me the opportunity to do so. They've decided uh, tonight that they wish to replace me with Anne Maguire and I congratulate her on a splendid victory and on a campaign which as she said was fairly fought, cleanly fought, and was an example for, for others to follow. It is uh, a fact of politics that we live by the ballot box, we live by the sword, and we die by the sword. Uh, and tonight, um, I regret that I will no longer be able to continue to represent uh, Stirling in the House of Commons. I'd like to thank uh, you, Mr. Returning Officer, for the uh, splendid way in which you've carried out the count and for the excellent way in which all the officers uh, carried out uh, their duties. Uh, also the police and the others who've uh, organized this so efficiently. I'd also like to thank uh, my agent and all my party workers and everyone who came out and supported me and voted for me in this election campaign. The, uh, I don't propose to make any great uh, political comment tonight except to say that there is something of a tidal wave uh, sweeping across the Conservative Party in the country. 
We could not uh, resist that uh, here in Stirling. There's no doubt that the voters wanted a change, and we are facing defeat this evening. But I think we can take some consolation in the fact that our opponents are winning by embracing the policies which we introduced back in 1979. Oh, yes. Against nationalization, pro-privatization, in favor of controlling public expenditure, against tax increases, in favor of the nuclear deterrent, in favor of strong policies of law and order, and in favor of choice. So I, I think that's new labor and neurosis that we're hearing. Uh, and, that, and that is a compliment to the way in which we as conservatives have transformed Scotland for the better and transformed the rhetoric of our opponents. Finally, uh, Mr. Returning Officer, could I just say uh, that uh, as well as enabling me to represent them in the House of Commons, the electors of Stirling enabled me to represent them in government for some 10 years and as Secretary of State, a job which uh, no Scot would hold other than with the greatest of pride. I hope I've made a difference to many people in Scotland as a result. And I thank the people of Stirling for having given me the opportunity uh, to do so. And now, as my children would say, it's time for me to get a life. Thank you very much. I, the other side, being the acting returning officer for the constituency above mentioned, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows. Cole, John Malcolm Charles. Liberal Democrat. 7,984. Ellen Stephen David. The Referendum Party. 1,960. Fox, John Marcus. 19, Conservative Party. 966. Leslie, Christopher Michael. The Labour Party. 22,000. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, I would uh, like to thank the returning officer and everyone concerned with this uh, voting procedure. I would be the last person, having served this constituency for some 27 years, not to pay a tribute to all those people who have helped to keep me in that office. It's been a great privilege, but I wish to uh, congratulate the new Member of Parliament and wish him the uh, success that he should have in the sense of serving his constituent, constituents to the best of his ability. I believe that this is, has been a unique occasion and it will certainly not be repeated under the same conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the result now for the Tatton constituency. I, Brian Longdon, being the acting returning officer at the election of a member of parliament for the Tatton constituency, held on the first day of May 1997, do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the election is as follows. Martin Bell, independent, 29,300. Twenty-nine thousand three hundred and fifty-four votes. David Lawrence Bishop, the Lord Byro versus the Skyway Tories, one hundred and sixteen votes. Mostyn Neil Hamilton, Conservative, eighteen thousand. Sam Hill, Independent, 295, Michael Paul Kennedy, Natural Law Party, 123, Simon Lauder Kinsey, Independent, 187, John Richard Muir, The Albion, 126, Ralph Nicholas, Independent, 113, Bernal Craig Penhall, Miss Moneypenny's glamorous known one party. As Miss Moneypenny the Transformer. Martin Bell is duly elected a member of parliament for the Tatton constituency. This is a proud moment for the people of Tatton, though I have to say a rather humbling one for me. I did not do this, you did it, it, it was not my victory, it was your victory. Though maybe there was a time when I received the endorsement of Sir Alec Guinness that I knew the force was with us. I believe you have lit a beacon which will shed light in some dark corners and illuminate the Mother of Parliament itself. It is a strong signal to the rest of the country which will be heeded. My thanks go to the returning officer and his staff, to the police, of course to my own staff, Kate Jones, my publisher and agent, Melissa, my daughter and spin doctor, Nigel Bateson, my former cameraman and close friend, 
Take Aid Tagely, Dave Dean and, and many others. What you have accomplished here has been to me some kind of a political miracle. Uh, I shall be and shall remain independent. I shall take no party whip. I shall serve for one term only. I am deeply grateful to all of you. And may I just repeat for the last time a couple of lines from G.K. Chesterton that I used during the campaign. Smile at us, pay us, pass us, but do not quite forget that we are the people of England and we have not spoken yet. You have spoken tonight magnificently and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. you, Mr. Longdon, for the exemplary way in which you customarily have carried out your functions this evening, and to the police and all those who have been responsible for maintaining the security of this building to enable this democratic process to be carried out to the full, and to all those who have been responsible for counting the votes and delivering them here this evening. I have been proud to represent the Tatton constituency for the last 14 years and of course am devastated at the result here this evening. I know it will come as a great disappointment to all those who have worked so hard to attempt to elect me for the fourth time as the Member of Parliament for this constituency. Foremost amongst those of course are my wife. Christine, my chairman Alan Barnes, my agent Peter McDowell, and many others here this evening and outside this building. We have worked very hard. We have fought the decent and dignified campaign which, which Mr. Bell expressed the hope at the beginning that he would also fight. Alas, it seems that the result in the rest of the country has gone the way of the result in the Tatton constituency. In 1945, when there was last a Labour landslide, Mrs Churchill said to Mr Churchill, it may be a blessing in disguise, to which he replied, at the moment it seems pretty effectively disguised. That is the way it appears to me at the moment, but Although this is undoubtedly a setback, of course, for me personally, I believe also, I'm bound to say this, a setback for the Tatton constituency. This, this, this is not the end of the road. Uh, this is not the end of my political career. Because another truism which Winston Churchill also said was, that politics is far more interesting than war because in war you can be killed only once but in politics many times. And so we will be back as a party, I will be back as a man. I would like to thank you all, my supporters and my constituents for the loyalty which you've shown to me during the last 14 years, a loyalty which I have sought to repay. And in spite of the grave slurs and false allegations to which I have been subjected, not least during this election campaign. I know that I shall be vindicated when Sir Gordon Downey's report is published very shortly. And then the full confidence of my supporters in me will be fully repaid and justified. Thank you. Here is the result of the election in the Edinburgh Pentlands constituency. The percentage poll was 76.65%.
The votes cast for each candidate were as follows. Linda Margaret Clark, Scottish Labour Party, 19,675. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Dodd, Scottish Liberal Democrat, 4,575. <laughs> Stuart Gibb, Scottish National Party, 5,952. Robin Charles Morton Harper, Scottish Green Party, 224. <laughs> Alistair David McConaughey, UK Independence Party, 81. 81. <laughs> Malcolm MacDonald, Referendum Party, 422. <laughs> Malcolm Leslie Rifkind, Scottish Conservative and Unionist, 14,813. And I declare that Linda Margaret Clark has been elected to serve in Parliament as a member for the Edinburgh Penguins constituency. Occasion. Democracy in action is awesome. Today at the polling station, I met by chance an old lady who was almost blind and she was crippled, but she was determined to vote. And I'm so pleased that so many people all over Britain have voted today. I thank the voters in Pentlands in particular for voting and for so many of them voting for me. I thank the returning officer and the police for making sure that the poll was conducted so fairly. And I thank all my fellow candidates because the election that we have had in Edinburgh Pentlands has been a model of fairness and politeness and that is the way an election should be held. I look forward very much to being the MP for Pentlands and I look forward very much to voting in Westminster for a Scottish Parliament. It will be a great day for Scotland when we have a Scottish Parliament, and I look forward to it very much. But I, but I have to thank my campaign team, my election, Gerald O'Brien. It has been the most wonderful campaign team, I mean mainly because they put up with me for so long. But I also want to thank my many friends and colleagues who have supported me, my family, and I look forward to spending some time with them. <laughs> and I thank you all tonight, and I hope to uh, be in Parliament soon. I'd like to uh, thank the returning officer and his staff for the work that they have done this evening and to give my very genuine congratulations uh, to Linda Clark uh, for her victory in the Pentlands constituency this evening. Uh, I have been privileged to have worked with a marvellous team of colleagues in Pentlands during this uh, campaign and I am naturally very grateful to them and to the many thousands of people who have supported our candidates. Was, uh, something which uh, one feels uh, has been a very worthwhile experience. I'm conscious of the fact that for all my fellow Conservatives, north and south of the border, uh, this is a very sad, very worrying evening. But I make one particular point, that if 18 years ago, if 18 years ago we had been told that the price for serving our country and government would be 18 years of government, and then we would be defeated. Well, I think that would still have been worthwhile, because over those 18 years, we have so transformed the United Kingdom that even, that even,
We have so transformed the United Kingdom that even Mr Blair has found it necessary to campaign in this election on a solemn promise that he would not reverse all our achievements. And that is a compliment uh, to all that has been done uh, over many years. The Conservative Party, both in Scotland and throughout Britain, is the United Kingdom's oldest political party. We have suffered reverses in the past, and we have suffered great victories and enjoyed great achievements. We will return, and we will return both in Scotland and throughout the United Kingdom. I, of course, congratulate the Labour Party on their successes. They will enjoy these successes, but they must realise that democracy will have its day with them as it has had with us. And that is the nature of the great country of which we are all citizens. Thank you very much indeed. Parliamentary election, Bristol West constituency. I, Joan McLaren, being the returning officer at the above election, do hereby give notice that the number of votes recorded for each candidate at the said election is as follows. Lady Beecham, Referendum Party, 1,304. <laughs> Charles Boney, Liberal Democrat, 17,551. <laughs> Jay Brearley, Natural Law Party, 47. Oh. <laughs> Valerie David Davy, Labour Party, 22,000. <laughs> Twenty-two thousand and sixty-eight. <laughs> Nurse Roy Nurse, Socialist Labour Party, two hundred and forty-four. <laughs> Justin Quinnell, the Green Party, eight hundred and fifty-two. <laughs> William Walter Grave, Conservative Party, The number of ballot papers rejected was as follows. Follows, want of an official mark, nil. Voting for more than one candidate, 37. <laughs> Writing or mark by which voter could be identified, seven. Being unmarked or wholly void for uncertainty, 77. Rejected in part, nil total of 121. Oh, indeed. I do hereby declare that the said Valerie Davy is duly elected Member of Parliament for the said constituency. <laughs> here. This is, after all, a celebration of May Day. It is Labour Day. And May Day 
May Day 1997 will go down in the history of this country as the beginning of a new era. A new era in which hope has been restored, a new era in which the total population of the country, not just the few, will have dignity and be of regard. A new time in which there will be a new vision for this country in which all of us will work together to ensure there are not homeless on the streets of this city. Yeah. In which young, especially the young unemployed, we will get back into work and which will be a hard time and hard work for all of us, but we'll do it together. And I want to say to my Lord Mayor, to all those of you who have been responsible, the returning officer, all those of you who have worked so hard today, thank you. But more than that, I want to say to those people who have been working for the past year within Bristol West, in Bristol West Labour Party, to bring about this victory, a very special thank you. We are... We are, from all accounts, to see a very special new government arriving in Westminster very soon. One of the things I'm very proud of is that there will be more women there. Yeah! And I trust and will work for greater open democracy in the House so that never again will we be able to charge our MPs with not always being as open as they might have been with the people of this country. <laughs> finally, finally can, can I come back to Bristol West itself? It is a very special constituency. All of us as candidates here today have worked hard over a long time to represent this very special constituency, but it is divided north-south. Healing is needed, understanding is needed, tolerance is needed. Let us go forward from today together to work for this constituency and for our country to take it on into the 21st century. Thank you all of you very much. Lord Mayor, I'd like to join Valerie Davey in thanking you and all those whom you represent here, those, the uh, returning officers, all the counters, uh, all the, uh, the police, everybody uh, who we haven't given much trouble to, I don't think, so, um, but it's nice to see them. And uh, above all, I would like to thank the people of Bristol West uh, for giving me, for what is it now, 18 years, the privilege of representing them. It is, as Valerie rightly said, the most fascinating, I think, uh, without question, the most fascinating constituency in England. And it has got a whole range of different skills and peoples in it. It represents the whole microcosm of the world. Um, I, she will, I'm no doubt, look after it well. She'd better, because some of us will be trying, perhaps, to uh, come back later and see uh, how she's looked after it. Um, but I'm not, but I'm, not going, I'm not going to begrudge her her triumph tonight, nor uh, the Labour Party their triumph in the country more widely. It is a huge responsibility to govern this country. They have scored a very great victory, and they will need to use that great power, as I hope they will, with responsibility. They have the advantage of inheriting the strongest economy in Europe. I would like to, I would like, I would like to thank, because, because Labour, Labour um, will know this from their own experience of having suffered defeats in the past, it's not actually the people like Valerie and myself who get hurt most by defeats. It's all the workers and all the people, because Labour have been through it and Liberals have been through it. And I would like to thank all my party workers 
I'd like to thank, perhaps in particular, my agent, Philip Stevenson, but all those who worked with him and for him, not just in this campaign, but for the last few years. My Lord Mayor, thank you very much for the way in which, as usual, this has been conducted so well in Bristol. Thank you. thanking ICM and The Observer for the opinion poll which they published on Sunday and to say that this result along with result after result across the country demonstrates that there is no longer such a thing as a no-go area for the Labour Party. Can I thank you Mr Mayor? and the police and all of the others responsible for ensuring the smooth and efficient running of the count and the smooth and efficient running of the election process here in Enfield Southgate. Can I thank all of the other candidates? We've had a good campaign here. We've had no dirty tricks here. We've had an honest, open debate in the Enfield Southgate constituency, and that's welcome. And can I finally, but most importantly, thank two groups of people. First of all, my agent, Tony Watts, and the rest of the campaign team in Enfield Southgate, and those Labour supporters and members who came from outside Southgate to help, particularly over the last few weeks. And secondly, 
most importantly of all, the 20,000 people who voted Labour in Southgate, those who voted Labour consistently through the difficult years as well as now through the good years for Labour, their loyalty and consistency has been repaid with this result. Thousands of first-time voters, thousands of people switching from other parties, especially the Conservatives, and certainly hundreds of Liberal Democrats who put aside their national preference, voted tactically for Labour to ensure a non-Conservative victory. I pay tribute to all of them, and I will serve as the Member of Parliament for all of them, and indeed for all of the people who didn't vote for me as well. It's a good night for Labour. It's a good night for the country. You've all been here a long time, so you probably don't want to hear much more from me. We've got a long night to celebrate the weekend as well, but thanks a lot. Uh, Mr Mayor, uh, my first duty is to congratulate Stephen Twigg on his victory and say that uh, no one knows better than I what a great privilege it is to be the Member of Parliament for Enfield Southgate. He'll enjoy it very much indeed. I think he'll be a very good Member of Parliament, and I wish him well with it. Uh, we're obviously also going to have a new government. Government has to represent this country and do its best, and I wish the new government well too. It has been a great privilege to serve, and I thank all those people who made it possible for me for 13 years. In this election campaign, I'd like to thank Malcolm Tyndall, I'd like to thank all my supporters and the Conservative Association that has supported me for all these years. A truly uh, terrible night for the Conservatives. Uh, I would have wished to have been part of rebuilding it inside the House of Commons. I can't now do that, but I would like to do whatever I can from the wings to help rebuild a great party which has a great future. One thing, one thing alone I will not miss, and that's all the questions about the leadership. Thank you very much. As the acting returning officer for the Braintree constituency, I hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at the election was as follows. Abbott James Edward, Green Party candidate for Euro referendum, 712. Ellis Trevor Keith, Liberal Democrat, 6,418. Hurst Alan Arthur, the Labour Party candidate, 23,729. Newton Anthony Harold, the Conservative Party candidate, 22,278. Thank you. 22,278. Nolan Michael Anthony, commonly called Buster, New Millennium, New Way, Hemp candidate, 274. Westcott Nicholas Penrose, the Referendum Party candidate, 2,165. And that Alan Arthur Hurst has been duly elected to serve as member for the said constituency. I'd like to thank the returning officer and her staff for the very efficient and early time of the day way in which this has been conducted. It's been a very difficult count because of the double election and it's been conducted very efficiently indeed. And I'd like to thank also the staff who presided all day long in this election and again that went very smoothly. And particularly I think the police 
because this has been a very difficult and dangerous election for all of them. Uh, with the threat that we've had from the IRA to disrupt this election, I think we pay particular regard to the way, in fact, the police have conducted it in this constituency and I'm sure elsewhere. I'd like, I think, to express uh, uh, my sincere uh, benefit, condolences to Tony Newton. I think I would say that Tony Newton has served this constituency very well as a constituency member for the last 22 years. And I think it right and proper that that remark. I wish also to thank particularly my agent Peter Long. Not a man who seeks applause, as we all know, but nevertheless he has conducted this election, in my view, in the most efficient, energetic and inspiring way that's possible. I'd also would like to thank all of my friends in the Braintree Constituency Labour Party, many of whom are here, many more I think we will see within the next hour, and that my deep gratitude to them for the great triumph that they have achieved. And most of all, to the electors of Braintree, Whittam, Coggeshall, Kelverdon, Earls Cone, and all of the other villages in this division for coming home. Labour has waited for 42 years for this moment. We, Braintree has come back to Labour after over four decades. And it's come back at the time that the country has come back to Labour. Labour has already become the government whilst we've been in here as I understand it. Tony Blair has passed the majority position. The people of Britain are looking forward to what is occurring outside of this building now. Dawn is now breaking out in Braintree, and dawn is breaking out in Britain. And I shall be proud to serve the Labour movement as the member for the Braintree Division in the next Parliament. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I first of all associate myself with Alan's remarks about all those who have helped to conduct this election so well and so efficiently, uh, albeit as it has inevitably taken them until a fairly late hour or a fairly early hour, depending which way you look at it, to bring it to a conclusion. Uh, I was uh, able to visit all the polling stations today, so I was able to say thank you to the polling clerks in person, but there are many others, uh, both here and uh, outside, not here tonight, who played a part in this democratic process, uh, and they have my wholehearted thanks. Uh, secondly, in thanking Alan for his very generous remarks about me, uh, may I in turn say that unequivocally uh, I congratulate him uh, and his team on the campaign they have fought here in Braintree, which has certainly, in the Braintree constituency, which has certainly been the most effective campaign that the Labour Party uh, has uh, uh, conducted here uh, in over 20 years. Uh, there may have been one or two other factors in the uh, outcome, uh, but uh, nothing can take from them the fact uh, that they have worked very hard and clearly uh, very effectively. Uh, the third thing I would like to say is a word to my own loyal friends and supporters, many of whom are here tonight. Uh, many of them will be at least as disappointed uh, as I am, obviously, uh, by the result. They have worked very hard for me, not just in this election, but many of them in many previous elections. Indeed, I see people in front of me who have been working with me since I was first selected as the Conservative candidate here in 1972 uh, and have uh, given me tremendous service for which I want to expre express uh, my gratitude. I hope it is some comfort to them that although I haven't had a chance to do the statistics on the result that was announced a moment or two ago, that to judge from what I have seen on the television screen during the evening, we've actually done rather well in Braintree, <laughs> uh, and uh, they should take some satisfaction in that. Uh, for my part, this obviously is a very sad and disappointing day after having represented the area in Parliament uh, for some 23 uh, years. 
Uh, like Kenneth Clark, whom I saw speaking on the television earlier, uh, I'm one of those who have been a minister, a member of the government, for 18 uh, of those years, and I hope I may take some satisfaction in whatever contribution I have made in various offices during that period. But the thing in which I take most satisfaction is what I hope and believe has been some contribution to the life of this constituency and this area. That is the abiding satisfaction I will take away with me uh, in looking forward to the future and in wishing Alan well in his task of now representing this area in Parliament. Thank you.